Hi, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while, but uh, I've been busy with other things. Um, and to be honest, I got a little bit disillusioned, but uh, let's try again with the whole YouTube thing. So, today I'm hopefully doing something that will be useful to people because I could not find a video anywhere, um, or indeed very good instructions, on how to change the convertible roof on a R52 Mini Cooper. Um, this video does start with me trying to repair it with some instructions that I did find on, you, on YouTube and well you'll see for yourself but later on you'll you know you'll uh, see me replacing the roof so you can kind of work out how the repair goes. Anyway enjoy seeing me fail to start with and then hopefully we'll get some more success at the end. So here it is, a 2008 Mini Cooper convertible, R52 I believe is the designation, and picked it up at our good friends at Copart, and we were a bit puzzled as to what exactly what happened to it, but now we've got it, we've, we've found out, because when we bought it, that was the only visible damage a bust rear screen so but when you get it which you couldn't see on the photos and i'm not sure whether you'll be able to see now you sh there's a whole load of little dents all over the bonnet um and there's one or two sort of like teeny ones here as well so um that sort of led us through a bit of digging and looking at the timings of when this went into Copart and when it was sold and everything else we think the previous owner bought this around July and then they changed the personalised number plate then they changed it back again in August uh, around the end of July up in Leicestershire where it looks like this has come from there were some really really bad hailstorms and that would fit with lots and lots of little dents on the bonnet there and possibly putting in the back screen as well. So that, we think, is probably the issue. Everything inside the car is nice. Um, everything works except for one folding mirror there. The hood works perfectly fine. Um, it was a little bit full of water obviously when we got it um, but this all works perfectly fine and dandy as you can see um, the electric windows work come on there we go and that's all going back to where it lives all nicely as well and obviously it closes as well so we can start it up oh the battery's gone oh well so it won't start it up. So anyway, it starts up fine, it runs fine. Obviously no um, no history with it. Um, I'll go and charge up the battery and then we'll have a, have a go at fixing the back screen. Now strictly speaking, the, the screen is part of the hood and that needs replacing. But I've done some digging online and we have got a, just a screen and there is some people who have repaired it in the past so we're going to give that a go before we dive into buying a new hood completely so that will be the first job get it watertight so I've been round and I've masked up round the outside of this bonded piece here and around the actual inside of the bonded piece on the new bit of glass solves a number of purposes one is it highlights the edges of it for me because I'm now going to cut this piece out with the broken glass in it so it gives me a nice line to follow and then when we're gluing in the new one it means that we're not going to get glue all over the, the outside of the hood or on the glass so I'll do some cutting and then I'll come back right so Got all this nicely cut out so um, doing that um, cleaned it quickly with some isopropyl alcohol 
to make sure that it is clear of any grease. I'm going to have to do that bit again because I've just touched it um, because I'm an idiot. Um, same on here. Now I've also got some of these like clamps for putting on bits of trim and stuff like that. So I've got a set of those and I've put those on the glass. Then when they come round they'll go on there and they'll clamp that down. And then we've also got some gaffer tape to tape up the inside of this and some windscreen, some flexible windscreen adhesive. So as you can imagine the idea is we put the adhesive around here, put that inside here, clamp it up, tape it up and leave well alone. To give a little bit of wiggle room in here and take the tension out of it we're going to lift the roof up very very slightly probably only to about here just enough just to give a little bit of slack um, and that as I say is that we then wait and hope and fingers crossed if the redneck fix is right we'll have a new windscreen fixed in situ if not we've lost the cost of a bit of a windscreen and we'll have to replace the hood anyway but that just seems such a shame because the rest of the hood is so nice and it's actually in better condition than a lot of the hoods you'd buy as a replacement. So anyway, whoever thought up this design at Mini, well done. Give yourself a gold star. Well, it might work on VWs and a couple of other types of convertible, but I think we can safely say it doesn't work on Minis. Um, I've made a right chuffing mess everywhere. Um, and one of the problems I've got is you lift the hood up um, to about here, you go and start doing that and then, I'm guessing it's a safety feature, it automatically closes again, even when the battery is disconnected, which is annoying. Um, so, not sure how it does that, but anyway, so I'm off to go and buy the new hood, which is probably what I should have done in the first place. Never mind. Hey-ho, it'll have to have its... Uh, this other little uh, cover on for another few days. Hey ho! So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this trim off and the high level brake light. So, you open up the extra load option with the tailgate, um, which is just unclipping these two bits and lifting it up. And I'm using that to prop it up so that I can get at them. And then it's just this sea of torx bolts so this is also useful if you've got to replace this which we'll be doing as we go along as well so just standard torx bolts and undo it so let's go and get that done so that's left me with me high level brake light which was a bit of a sod to get out because of all the mud that was looking in there and then a couple of bits of trim looking like this so we'll put those away for later on um, this is all part of the, the new hood, so we don't need to worry about getting that off. So, now to try and work out the next bit. So, inside the car, focus, you need to take off this plastic piece inside, which has a torque screw either end, and then two hiding in the middle, which is a bit of a bugger to pull down. So, we can take that down. So, that's the next piece. Then, we need to pull this down which comes with a clip uh, I'm not going to do it now just in case pulling it one handed breaks and then there are three torques behind here holding this on like so again they're hidden so you sort of have to access them from, from behind Even a 90 degree screwdriver with the Torx bit is what I use for that. That exposes this bit, and once you've got the, the trim piece off, there's a torque screw you can get out at the back to get the rest of the back piece of this trim piece off. So the screw is, is up there somewhere hiding behind this. So pull the front bit down, undo the three torques, and then undo the torques at the back there. So next, slide the sunroof back, and then there's a whole load of clips all along the front here. You need to get a flathead screwdriver, and I've tried with a uh, trim clip and it doesn't work. And you sort of need to push that back and then clip it up 
to unclip this as you go along. So that's what I'm merrily doing now. There is a whole load of them. So absolute loads of them. And they like to clip back into place. So it's a bit of a bugger. I would also, if you're anything like me, recommend disconnecting the horn because if I've lent on that once, I've lent on it a dozen times. And it's bloody annoying. Now that's done, you can get your screwdriver and, uh, there and pull them all down. Um, they range from really difficult when you start to quite difficult at the other end. They do get slightly easier but not, not lots. So there we go. There's a tiny, at the back of the thing, a tiny little wiry job there that we need to disconnect as well so because that is attached to the fabric so it's just a, a jiggle it loose and ease it with a screwdriver job and once you've done oops, once you've done that you can then pry that off and you've got the first part of it off just need to do the other side now. The next bit will depend on how your replacement canvas comes. Now I've got a second hand canvas that comes with this metal piece on the front still attached because this is, as you can see, bonded to that and clipped. So if you haven't got that, um, you'll need to unstick that and then restick it later. As I've got the, the new one in my replacement, I'm just going to undo the five bolts on each side and then just take that whole piece off rather than unbond it and re unbond the new one and then rebond it. So that depends on how your new one comes, the next one. Um, I'm not sure there's a better way or a worse way. They are very tight. I can't find talk spec for them anywhere when it comes to their own backup. So just doing back up really tight is in my current plan with a smidge of Loctite. So once I've got that off and folded back, I then need to retrieve these little plates from the inside. If yours has got the plates, you only need to do the end two bolts and the three middle ones you don't need to worry about, but because um, I click onto the mechanism here. So uh, again, depends on what you've got, but I need to retain those little little plates out the end. They just sort of slide in here. Um, and then we need to get this bar out. So just un loosen that nut right off so you've got a bit of wiggle room on here. And then it's a case of push down on the top and uh, give it a bit of a jiggle really um, and it pops out of that little grommet there it's not madly fixed in so it's not too hard all right for the next bit raise the roof up we then need to take off this piece of trim here which is torques there and then there's one right up in the channel that the glass goes into under there and then we also need to pop off the trim on this side as well as a starter for 10. Um, and then I'll be back in a sec when I've done that. So take off the trim on the inside, again another little torx on the inside. Then once you've done that, undo these two and let this swing down. I'm not sure how well these are going to show up. But once you've done that, there are two little 8mm bolts there the nuts need to come off of. Once you've got those nuts off, and the second one I dropped on both times and then found the nuts, you can jiggle it through it for free, if I can talk. There's a handy little pulley jobby on the back here. Uh, the plate will fall out if you're not quick enough to catch it. Um, and then we can unclip all of that and fold it back for the next bit. See, it is coming off slowly but surely. We're getting there. Right, the next bit is just behind the quarter lights. You need to undo that to release some tension on there. And then on the back of this diagonal piece, there's three or four screws. Once you undo that, um, this comes off and you can get at the screw that's on the back side of here holding the bottom of that tension in and then you can undo whoops, that big big juicy one there 
and its friend that is about here. And that eases off the next bit of the canvas. Once you've got all these bits out, there's then, I don't know what you see, three uh, what do you call them, rivets on each side, which we need to drill out. So and that's this bit of webbing. So you just need to, again, like everything, keep an eye on how it's all put together before you take it to bits. But we just need to drill those out ready for later. I lied, there's a fourth one on the back here that we need to do as well. It's in the same place, it's all attached to the same bar. Okay, on the back bar, there's two torques that hold this flappy bit of material on, which we've got to, to get at. Hopefully you can sort of see them there. So that's the next job. At this point, we're struggling to see which screws are which all the way under there and get at them. So as this roof is toast anyway, we're going to resort to our friend Stanley Blade and just chop the top bit off so that we can get a bit more access. On the right hand side, there's a little bar here that you just need to pop off with a screwdriver. It's just on a, a ball and socket joint. I'm not sure how well you can see that because I'm struggling to get in, but that's the bar and you'll need to undo the top of it. All right. Now Stanley's made us be able to see, we can see on both sides are the same. Above the wheel arch, there's a little square tab there. So literally that's above the wheel arch. Um, so if I do that, you can see it's with the petrol cap on the passenger side or the left hand side if you're American. Um, we then need to pull, whoops, excuse me, pull down the insides, unplug the lead there, and sorry, this is a bit wobbly. Um, undo the three bolts that hold this hinge on on both sides, and we should to be off. So after drilling out the three rivets holding a bit of webbing just discovered a fourth one here for the um, holding the cable that just holds all the uh, floaty bits of fabric together so need to draw that one out as well and there we have it all done so um, I've still got some trims to do around here um, which I shall do in a bit later um, but we have a roof we're watertight drivable and um, just as I say a few trims to put them back on inside uh, a few little trims to put on outside but we are done so putting it back on was literally the reverse of taking it off and um, recommendation I'd have is you need a really long screwdriver for, with the torx end a 90 degree screwdriver with a torx end and it's also useful to have a torx set for your socket for a couple of them and everything's thread locked so lots of thread lock but apart from that it's just two of you put those in it into place really um, some of it does require a good good hard yank to get into place but it does go back eventually not a problem so there we go the roof is on the mini yay